So now is the time when we talk about sticking windows in those thick walls that we were looking at earlier. One of the first questions I get whenever I post videos like that is like, how do I, how do I detail the windows in those walls um, or doors? It's a fair question. I think the better question is how, how the heck do I attach corner boards on a wall with four inches of foam because there's nothing to nail into. But this is about windows, so we'll look at that. At first, we're going to go over the job description of a window in the first place, just so that we'll sort of know what we're trying to accomplish, you know, keep that 30,000 foot view of what we're trying to accomplish. And then we'll sort of think through a couple of considerations before covering how to install innies and outies, both in animation land and the real world. And then we'll peek at um, in betweenies. So for windows, um, you know, windows are part of the exterior shell. They're part of the envelope. They have to do the same thing that the other parts of the wall have to do. They need to control air. They need to control water. They need to control heat. They also have to selectively stop light because um, they, they need to be clear, but you can also see through so that you can see through them, but they need to be able to stop UV and IR spectra of light. And um, and so that's that's, you know, Fortunately, that's not our problem. The window manufacturers have to deal with that. Our problem is installing them correctly. This is an illustration from, again, the Building America Solution Center showing all the ways that heat, air, and water can seep through a wall. You know, the red, the red arrows are um, heat, the blue ones are wind and air, and the yellow ones are radiation. So, you know, there's a lot of leaky leaky places, a lot of chances for stuff to get through that you don't want to get through. So windows have a pretty tough job in the whole building envelope world. Um, again, our, our problem isn't how to be spectrally selective. Our problem is how to install them so that they won't leak those arrows in the previous illustration. This animation shows how to do it in a regular wall without any exterior insulation. So this is just a tight window installation in a regular old uh, 20th century wall. It, it comes from the best practice guide of BOA, again, in the Washington, D.C. area. Integrating a window into the house wrap is critical for stopping water and air leaks. First, cut the house wrap flush along all sides of the rough opening. Cut 45 degrees extending outward from the top corners to create a flap. Slope the sill with beveled siding or by sloping the actual sill plate. Flash the sill with flashing tape. Push the tape tight into the corners, being careful not to puncture. Jam flashing should extend over the sill flashing up to the top of the flap in the house wrap. And it should extend at least two inches past the exterior trim because there will be a vertical joint where the siding meets. That joint needs to be protected. Caulk the top and sides of the rough opening. Skip caulk the bottom. Leave gaps every six inches or so to make weep gaps for drainage. Install the window centered in the opening. When the bottom is level, nail the bottom corners of the flange. Measure diagonally to make sure the window frame is square. With the window level, plumb, square, and centered, nail off the perimeter. Tape over the side flanges to make the air seal. Extend about an inch above the top of the window, but not above the tape at the head flange. This tape should extend past the side tape, bridging any gaps between the window and the wall sheathing. Fold down the top flap of the house wrap and tape the seams. Inside, seal the top and sides of the window with low expansion foam to keep from bowing the frame. At the sill plate, use caulk to seal the back dam. Multiple layers of air sealing, overlapped right, keeps water out of the wall. So 
So just sort of thinking like water, um, overlapping correctly, understanding that most water follows gravity and will go down. And if you provide a place for it to leak in, it will absolutely leak in. So that's the job description. Um, be like a wall, but be selectively transparent. Now we can look at two types of window installations in a thick wall like that. So innies and outies, you know, which is better? Both are better. They're both good at doing different things and they both depend on the, the best choice depends on, you know, what you have and who you've got working with you. Um, what they should both have in common is that there's a continuous air barrier, there's a continuous water barrier and a continuous thermal barrier for the wall. Uh, there's a lot of different wall types as we saw earlier. Double stud construction puts solid framing lumber on the inside and the outside of a wall. So fastening trim is basically no different inside or outside. Um, whereas trimming a window outside a wall with four inches of foam is a lot different than normal. So, you know, if your exterior carpenters aren't as good as the interior carpenters, maybe it's better to make it easier on the exterior people. Um, so the other issue kind of relates to WRB, and I think we talked about, or it came up a little bit earlier. For, for this system um, that we're going to look at on the on the innies, the WRB is behind the foam. We saw we saw some of it earlier when they were putting the foam up. They the outside the old siding was T111, right? It was still structurally good and solid, so there was no reason to remove it. So they just covered it with WRB flashed the window opening, stuck the windows in, and then got the windows airtight with the WRB. Then they added foam to the outside, um, making sure to pull that bottom um, sill pan flashing out so that it extended out to the outside of the foam so any water that got in can get out. Some details call for the WRB to go outside the foam, which is valid, you can do. And in fact, in an earlier class uh, a couple of days ago, somebody said that their building inspector wanted them to put the WRB outside the foam because of the permeability rating of the um, exterior foam. So uh, don't argue with your building inspector, just get a, you can just get an engineer stamp to overrule them or you can you know, just come up with a different solution. So there is a way to do it with the WRB on the outside, but that's not what we're gonna look at here because we're just trying to keep it focused. So, just because the WRB is back behind the foam doesn't mean you have to use an innie, it's just a little bit easier. So we looked at innies and outies and we declared a tie. So either one is gonna be good and we'll just keep moving along and we'll look at how to install innies in a wall. Um, one good thing about innies is that they shelter the window better. Windows that don't get wet leak a whole lot less than windows that do get wet. So they also shade the windows better. So they allow less heat gain in and less UV damage as well. Um, they're essential if using replacement windows as part of an exterior foam retrofit or something because replacement windows sit inside the original frame, which is in the inner plane, wall plane. Um, the window in this picture is an innie. There's four inches of foam on the outside. It's the same house we looked at earlier um, that, that Calvin and Damien were putting foam up on. In the last video, you remember they left two and a quarter inches of the window frame visible when they were installing that foam. Um, now about an inch of that uh, is taken up by an extension jam. So you can see an extension jam leading out from the window to the casing. So they pre-assemble casing, nail it to a four inch extension jam, and then they fasten the casing through the furring strips to trim that window out. Here's an animation that basically shows a 30,000 foot view of that. We're gonna, they flash the window, add the foam, show about extending that um, sill pan flashing out, and then they briefly show the how to trim it out. Any windows are windows in thick walls that are flush to the inside of the wall. They begin like any other wall studs, sheathing, and a layer of house wrap. Cut the house wrap tight to the window openings. Sloping the sill allows any water that leaks in to flow out. 
add some flashing tape to the sill, but don't stick the downhill leg to the house wrap yet. Instead, adhere a wider strip to extend out past the thickness of the foam later. Install jam flashing extending into the opening as far as the window will go and out past where the exterior casing will extend. Install the window plumb level square and centered in the opening. Tape the flanges with upper pieces overlapping lower. Fold the head flap down and tape the seams with contractor tape. In animation land, gravity can be suspended, but you'll have to tuck the foam under the flap. If using two layers, install them perpendicular to each other and weave the corners, outside and inside corners. Fold the sill flashing down and seal it to the foam now. To cover the exposed edges of foam, make extension jams pre-assembled to some casing and install to the window. Tape the seams and corners to complete the air barrier and your sheltered any window will be safe and dry. So, you know, pretty straightforward again. Install the window as usual, but make the pan flashing wide enough to extend out to pass to the ex exterior foam. Um, the trim detail surprised me the first time I saw it in how simple it is. But I guess it shouldn't have because we do the same thing inside all the time. You know, the walls are wider than the than the the window jams, so we build custom extension jams for deep recesses and build build them into bookcases and all kinds of other stuff. Um, so it, it shouldn't be a surprise, and it's really nothing new. It doesn't. The other great thing about it is that you know the window is already watertight before you even install the foam. So the window, so this trim doesn't have to be a watertight element. Its main job is just to cover the edge of the foam and to look good um, and, and not necessarily to shed water. I mean, don't build it to allow a ton of water to get dumped into your wall, but it's not, that's not its primary job. Okay, so here's the same detail in the real world, um, installing the, or flashing the window. Um, we're gonna beginning with the window frame opening with, with the, the sill pan. You remember the windows were already installed when the guys were installing foam on the split level ranch in the previous um, sessions. Now we're gonna back up to that step before the foam where they're just, where they're flashing the windows. As part of the renovation to this house, the energy performance is being significantly raised. Triple glazed windows are being installed and four inches of rigid foam will blanket the walls and roof. When doubling the thickness of your walls, windows can be installed to the inside or outside, uh, called innies and outies. This video is about innies. The first steps in the process involve prepping the rough opening. We like to install windows over a sloped sill, so we use beveled siding. Put a couple of nails in there to hold it in place, because we will be shimming the window on the elastic membrane on it. Some tapes can stretch around corners, but Dave's going to demonstrate with a non-flexible flashing tape. See, there's a little piece of plastic inside, like a fishing line. First, he splits the release sheet. Pull that out. He works from the center out to either side, uh, keeping the flashing tape along the inside edge of the window. We're going to put four inches of foam on this house. We want to be able to put another piece on, go out over the four inches of foam and turn down. down the wall, not quite all the way, leaving a little bit to stretch. Wait, did you see what just happened? He cuts the corner, but not all the way to the joint in the framing. He cuts it short and bends the tape around the framing. Putting two inches to the outside, 
and the rest will be going inside. Dave wraps the corner, putting only as much peel and stick inside the rough opening as the depth of the window. He cuts the bottom, but not tight to the corner again, so he can bend the tape around. Now the corner is the, the weakest point, and we've crossed it twice. And we can put another little piece on that will go over that again. Even though this would be kind of like a reverse flash, it is already flashed. So it's not really a reverse flash. Just giving the corner the weakest point, triple coverage. So that video was shot before tape, stretchy tape was a widely accepted thing. They had some on that job site. It was a lot more expensive then too. And Dave is kind of a cheapskate, so he was using the cheaper stuff. Um, one thing you'll notice, you know, he went over that corner three times, so that starts to build up quite a bit. So it's, you know, you're, it's gonna take up space. And if your rough openings are tight, you might start making, you know, limiting the, the ability of the window installers to install the windows the way they want. Um, stretch tape would probably be a better choice. Uh, and also liquid flashing would be a good choice because it's just gonna be one continuous monolithic little slab of, of flashing on the in the opening. The point is generally that corners get damaged, so it's important to protect them with flashing. And I wanted to skip back to a video that we looked at a little bit earlier, just a one little section of it where David's talking about integrating all of that stuff together um, because it's really gets to the point about multiple layers being added with if the edges of all these layers aren't terminated every single layer is a potential air leak and and probably not a potential air leak it is a leak unless you seal it the windows were installed and flashed to the openings before the house wrap and then the house wrap is sealed to the windows with a flashing tape dave explains how flashing tape connects all the layers our flashing membrane from the outside, from the window itself, crossing right over the flange onto the sub-flashing and onto the house rack. The sub-flashing protects our building from any leak that could happen in the window. Yeah. The house wrap goes over that and is adhered to that. Which makes a good air seal and water seal. The pan flashing is extended out so that it can drain water to the outside of the foam sheathing. So the layers aren't stacked up, they're all covered at the very end to make sure that um, stuff doesn't sneak in the sideways. That's a little out of focus, but the detail is good. And it's important to be aware that all those layers that you're adding terminate somewhere. So that's done with innies, basically the same window install as a house with no exterior insulation, but you bring the sill pan flashing all the way out to the face of the foam so that you can um, get, you know, dump water out away from the house and you extend the window trim into the face of the window. Um, I think we're gonna take a lunch break here uh, if you're getting hungry, but I, let, let me just, before we do that, just go back to the, when we were, we were showing that window opening, they were cutting the WRB. You know, when I was framing houses a long time ago, in the 90s, we used to do kind of like an X shape cut on the window openings and then fold the WRB back inside and staple it to the interior face of the studs. Um, that's bringing a, another layer inside and it's really communicating the exterior and the interior. And if you don't seal that, if you don't tape the edge of that brought into the inside of the house, then you're absolutely opening up to air leaks. Lately, I mean, that's used to be what the manufacturers called for. Um, but as they've learned more about air barriers and as air barriers have worked their way into the building code, they've changed the way that they recommend to install them. So now, you know, most of them call for cutting it right flush with the opening. And then that way the tape, when you do your jam flashing, it seals the WRB to the, to the framing. Um, some people even call for cutting it back an inch to expose an inch of plywood and then bridging you know, the, the WRB, the plywood around the corner to the framing. I, 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 I don't think either one is particularly better. And I think if you're sweating the details that much, you're probably gonna get it right. Okay, done with innies, outies. Another, you know, relatively simple, but 
you know, a little bit complicated maybe. These particular windows that we're gonna be looking at, these Audis are installed using wooden bucks that provide solid nailing for the window flange and the exterior trim. Um, the wooden bucks are woven into the foam, at least in this method. And this is, you know, again, this is David Joyce and his crew again on a different house than the last one. This one has a little addition, which I like to call a super insulated sunroom because it's new construction. They can choose whatever design they want. Um, they're not restricted to where the WRB is located or where, you know, it has been traditionally. In this case, they're using zip sheathing on the, on the wall. So the WRB is baked into the OSB. And so there's no real advantage to installing the window as an innie. Um, before we look at how these guys install it, we'll go back again and look at a general animation that does um, that has house wrap WRB. So you can see sort of two versions of the same process. And then after the house wrap, the first layer of foam is installed and the windows are installed along with the second layer of foam in the window box. So here is an animation showing that process. An Audi window is one that is set flush to the outer face of a thick wall. Peeling back the layers, we can begin the process at the beginning, the bottom of the wall, where a bug shield is added to keep insects out of the foam insulation. The top leg is taped to the wall sheathing with contractor tape. Tape the seams in the OSB with flashing tape to establish the primary air barrier. Add house wrap according to the manufacturer's specifications, and then install the first layer of foam to the walls. Plan the pieces so that the second layer has perpendicular seams and to allow a continuous run under the windowsill. Window bucks will thicken the other three sides of the window opening. The buck should be the same thickness as the next layer of insulation. Cut an angle from the foam at the bottom of the rough opening to slope outward and then install pan flashing extending up the side jams. Cover the jams with peel and stick overlapping the pan flashing and extending into the rough opening to bridge all the layers back to the rough frame. Now you can set the window, plumb, square, and centered in the opening. Tape the side flanges with flashing tape and form a Z flashing over the head flange, extending up the buck and onto the first layer of insulation. The rest of the second layer can go up now, piecing in the sides and running a continuous strip over the window. The insulation is then taped to the window bucks, as are the seams. The bottom of the window is left open to drain, but it's sealed inside with low expansion foam or sealant. Top it off by sealing the corners of the walls with wide pieces of flashing membrane. Now it's time to pat yourself on the back because you've got an airtight wall that won't be dogged by water problems. <laughs> Okay, so again, pretty simple in a perfect world. Kind of seems like the one that I would do if I had to choose, you know, starting from square one because I like the idea of nailing stuff into wood. Um, that being said, I'm doing innies on my house right now because it's a retrofit. I'm adding a bunch of foam to the outside and using replacement windows that I can do from the inside. Um, so let's look at the details about weaving nail bucks into the foam, installing the second layer and the taping sequence in the real world. In the first part of this super insulated sunroom, we covered prepping and installing the first layer of foam. What we accomplished here was to have a thermal break between the frame and everything else. And now we're going to install this so we can attach the window to it properly. In this video, David and the guys will buck out the window openings as nailing for the window flanges. The layers of foam are two inches and so are the window bucks. Six inch screws are countersunk with a spade bit. First to go up is the top piece that spans all the windows. David and Calvin screw off the ends and then work towards the center keeping it level and bending it straight. With the top span level, they fill in the sides, butting the second layer of foam on the bottom and slipping under the top above. 
An even reveal is going to be really important when it comes time to trim out the windows later on. David also marks where the bucks should be centered to make sure that they are evenly distributed and not competing for space. In this case, David forgot about the steel post behind the sheathing, so he has to come up with a new fastening strategy. Then it is back to normal. As they work along the sides, they're careful to keep the bucks pretty close to plumb and straight. The other important dimension to keep in mind is the compression dimension. Make sure you don't bow the bucks in by compressing the foam around the windows. Finally, cut back that bottom layer of foam to create a sloped sill for when it's time to flash the windows in the next video. Yeah, so the first layer of foam provides that thermal break for the nail bucks, which are then screwed through the foam back to the framing. And in this process, I didn't show the first layer of foam because that's, I mean, I think we already covered that. And I'm gonna go ahead and skip the window installation in the real world, because you already know how to install a window. You basically nail it into the wood. Um, the key, the key detail in this is the flashing tape that covers all of the layers from the outside face of the foam all the way back to the two by six framing. I pointed that out um, in the animation because, um, you know, again, everywhere where two materials meet is a leak unless you seal it. So here's the next video about that second layer of foam. Last time at the super insulated sunroom, we set windows to be flush with the not yet installed outer layer of foam. The windows are sealed to the framing bucks along the sides, and above, a Z flashing is formed to push any water out if it ever gets behind the outer layer of foam, which is what we'll install in this episode. Begin by ripping the panels to size and placing them on the wall. On the first layer, the full-length panels were vertical, and they filled in pieces between. On this layer, the full-length pieces are horizontal. Because strapping will be screwed to the outside of the foam, you only need two screws per panel to keep it from moving around. With all the panels in place, they turn to sealing the seams in the foam. Along the window bucks on the sides and top, and at the gaps between the foam panels. Before adding insulation to the roof, they seal the layers of this thick wall assembly. Zip system tape was added at the framing stage to seal the roof and wall sheathing. Calvin uses another flashing tape to seal the facing of the insulation to the zip tape. The flashing tape is tenacious, so they keep it up off the zip tape and make sure to align the edges tightly before smoothing it down in place. Calvin overlaps the rake, shingle style. The outer edge is then folded down to seal to the foil facing of the polyisocyanurate foam panels. Finally, zip tape is used to make a tight connection between the zip sheathing and the air sealing tape just installed. On the wall, Dave covers the seam with Dow Weathermate tape, which he's a big fan of because it sticks to everything. A super insulated sunroom may seem oxymoronic, but this one is a tight addition to an energy independent home. Oxymoronic. So the, one of the key details on that was the Z flashing above the window. The other is the incessant covering of all gaps and edges of layers. Because again, if it's not sealed, it is a leak, not a maybe leak. So that's innies and that's outies and that's innies versus outies. Now we're going to look at in betweenies, which is another possibility. Um, we're going to go back to Ben Bogey. 
the kick-ass carpenter in Connecticut who did the eye joist, the exterior eye joist cabin earlier. Those walls are about 14 inches thick, I believe. So it's a good example of when in betweenies might make more sense than innies or outies. Um, it, it, you kind of get the added benefit of, of, you know, shelter on the outside and space for bowling trophies on the inside. You can see, so here we are inside the cabin. You can see two by four construction on the inside, but you can see that that window well is a heck of a lot deeper than three and a half inches. And you can also see outside the window um, where, you know, there's still quite a bit of wall left. So putting the window halfway in the opening provides plenty of room for your cat on the inside and room for shelter on the outside. Here's part one of the flashing process. Uh, ben also is a little bit OCD, uh, self-described OCD carpenter. So, and, and he's pretty nerdy. So that makes him a great choice for a high performance builder. This flashing tape that he uses is uh, super wide with three release sheets on the back making it a lot easier to flash deep openings like that because um, the tape's pretty tenacious as well. And uh, little things like that can matter quite a bit in the overall um, success of your assembly. Installing an in between -y window is a lot like installing an innie or an outy, only it is in between. Ben cuts back the high performance weather barrier. Well, he chooses the martini glass shape. Not because he's a fan of classic cocktails, but because he's going to use the WRB for jam flashing in the next video. He measures in from the outside to snap a line indicating the inside of the window. He slices the outer corner of the WRB so that he can tuck the flashing membrane under. which he then cuts, about eight inches longer than the opening. Then he gets ready to peel and stick the peel and stick. The back side of this sill membrane has three release strips. So we start by taking the small one to use it as a positioning strip. The second strip covers the window sill and the last one wraps the corner. Before you pull any of it off, you get your membrane in position. And I like to see about four inches turned up on either end. I only pull off as much as I need to apply it because as soon as this stuff sticks, it sticks. So use a little squeegee to get your corners nice. These tapes are pressure sensitive and they must be tooled when applied. The corners are stuck to the line that he snapped a few frames back. Tighten the corner with a squeegee and then pull off the rest of the backing paper and chuck it on the floor. He rolls this first strip with a J-roller. Removing the middle strip of backing is more touchy. You can see right here, you want to get yourself pulled back so that you're beyond that corner because if you're like this and you go to pull the release paper off, oftentimes it'll kink and tear right there and then you're trying to chase a little edge to get it peeled back. It becomes a nightmare. And the sun's on us so this stuff is getting Super duper sticky. Just gonna let it relax into the corner. Zen and the art of window flashing. I have to force it. Once it's stuck, it's stuck. No second chances. Squeegee the corner, pull out the rest of the release paper, and break out the roller buggy. The final strip of membrane will bend around the corners. Peel off the release paper, being careful not to tear it in the process. Bend the membrane around the corner, but don't get too carried away. Ben points out that whenever you stretch a material, you thin it, and this is not a place where thinner is better. Just about like that is perfect. Break out the roller buggy again. Vroom, vroom. Now Ben is ready to flash the jams and head before setting the window in the middle of this thick, thick wall. Roller buggy. 
Ben always has the coolest tools. Okay, so let's do the rest of the window flashing here. With the silk pan flashed, Ben turns to the jams. First, he tapes the slits in the outer corners of the WRB that he made to accommodate the silk pan, and he tools the tape in place. Now he can fill in the jams with leftover WRB because it's a lot less expensive than the wide flashing tape he used on the windowsill. Tap those staples home and tape the seams. This is kind of a spoiler alert. There's a lot of taping in this video. Most membranes and tapes are pressure sensitive, so they must be tooled when they're applied. If you don't use a roller, they may not stick. You can use a J-Roller or the Volkswagen Roller that Ben bought on eBay. It's not really made by Volkswagen, and he didn't really get it on eBay. It was made by FastCap. Tape the top flap, roll it, and cut some more tape. With the outside corner taped, there's one weak spot up top, and he finishes them off with a couple of bow ties. Here's how to make them. So to make a bow tie, about a four inch wide piece of membrane, 12 inches wide. Put in two pieces. The next step is to make some approximately like 30 degree cuts from near the middle of the piece to your outside corners. Now you've got a section right here where you have to connect. The membrane is sticky, making the bow ties tricky to install without sticking them to themselves or sticking to your beard in the process. Another spoiler alert. There's a lot of J-rolling in this video too, but we cut out more than we include it, so yeah. Cut the weather barrier in a plumb line where the inside of the window will be, so that you can make a clean transition between the wood and the weather barrier that will be sealed with tape. So we don't have any infiltration that can come from behind our WRB, and this is also functioning as a secondary air barrier. The primary air barrier is the zip system wall sheathing with the seams taped. The tape stops at the outside of the window, not the outside of the wall. This allows drainage for water. Sealing this inner edge with tape completes the air barrier system. With the window flashed and taped tight, it's time to set some windows, which we'll cover in the next video. So again, the main principle is to seal everything back to the framing. Don't get it stuck in your beard. Practical the details are not to get ahead of the tape. Um, if you're flashing on hot days, be really careful because they stick. The last couple of uh, wall assemblies, I skipped the window installations because you probably already know how to install windows. This one is just a little bit different, so I thought it's worth including. Uh, they're triple glazed casement windows, which doesn't make the installation any different with uh, deep snap-on sills. Now that the sill pan is flashed and the jams are taped tight, it's time to prep the windows for installation. First, Ben and Charles put the window on sawhorses to remove the packaging. And there's a lot of packaging because these windows came all the way from Ireland. Ben peels the facing tape from the bottom rail so that they can install the deep sill. After cutting the silicone blobs out of the groove, they fill the groove with high performance goop.
Before slipping the sill into the slot, Ben sets pan head screws into the bottom of the sill. The sill is aligned and screwed in place. Metal fastening straps lock into the sides of the window and we're ready to put the window into the hole. Ben uses a couple of airbags to nudge the window into the center of the opening and hold it in place. In-betweeny windows also need to be centered in and out so that the sill indexes correctly with the outside face of the wall. When it's sitting where they like it, they level the bottom with shims. Yeah, your bottom right hand corner has got to go up. How's that? Pressure off right now? Yes. To plumb the sides, Charles fastens the top straps and then shims the window frame into the plumb position. He marks the shim depth and then he cuts off the excess. So that they don't protrude out past the window. And screws the shims in place. Outside, Ben peels back the rest of the protective film and breaks out his split-release air sealing tape. First, he sticks the tape to the window frame, being careful to avoid wrinkles or air bubbles and tooling it tight with his little blue squeegee. Next, he sticks the tape to the weather barrier, again being meticulous about tooling the tape tightly to avoid bubbles and wrinkles. Then he moves on to the other side and top. Inside, the plywood bucks are taped to the window framing and the window is sealed to the plywood with low expansion foam. All that's left to do now is revel in the results of the blower door test. 0.4 air changes per hour, and that's pretty good for a 1930s cabin in the woods. about the blower door number at the end. So yeah, the windows are not flanged, nor can they be, because there's no framing in the middle of the opening to nail the, nail the flange into. Um, on the first window that we installed, the innies, David and his crew also used some European triple glazed windows that had metal straps for fastening. Uh, those windows had taping flanges on them or that you could add to them to help align the window in the opening, but they're not a structural nailing flange and they're strictly for air sealing and taping. Um, on this project, ben, they, they didn't have the little flanges and nor was there not anything to attach to, so he bridged the window opening with a split release sticky tape and squirted canned foam on the inside. And you also noticed that Charles was sealing the, all the edges of the layers of plywood that were used to build up that window opening. So again, bringing all the layers back to the framing. So that looks like it wraps up the window section, the innies, the outies, the in-betweenies. 